Alright everybody, welcome back to yet again another video and the season previews continue once again with the Washington Capitals today, a team who actually has a lot of questions surrounding them and maybe more than people may think. Washington has some big injuries to their top six and we'll see how that affects them getting later on in this video. But first off, let's take a look at what happened last season with the Washington Capitals, just an overall recap. Uh, so last season for the Capitals was a pretty good one. They went 44, 26, and 12 for 100 points. They scored 275 goals and only let in 245. And they unfortunately lost in round one to the Florida Panthers. But they put up more of, the, more of a fight than people thought they were going to. So that's why I'm impressed with this Capitals team. Uh, the leading scorer was Alex Ovechkin with 50 goals, 40 assists for 90 points. And then the goalie was Ilya Samsonov with a 23, 12, and 5 record with a 3.02 goals against average. It was quite the interesting season. Uh, nonetheless, a good team. And um, they did make some big additions, though, this past offseason. And they are very notable because this team kind of revamped in some places. Uh, more, most most mainly, their goaltending. Uh, so some of their key departures have to be Ilya Samsonov and Vitek Vanacek. We have to mention those guys first. Obviously... Um, those are your two goalies, your starter and your backup tendy, depending on how you want to rank them. Uh, that is definitely, that, they're definitely losses, but I think the guys that they got back in return definitely do make up for that. Uh, obviously this tandem was very controversial since Brayden and Holpe left. We, there were wonders of whether this tandem was going to stand in the NHL or not. There's been a lot of questions, uh, surrounding that tandem as a whole, and I'm glad it's done with. Uh, the other players who left were Justin Schultz, Johan Larson, and Michael Kempney. So some players to their middle six and their bottom six that they lost. No really big players apart from that, though, that are really eye-openers. Now, in their acquisitions, there may be some other eye-openers there, though. Uh, so you have Connor Brown, uh, Dylan Strom, you have Darcy Kemper, you have Charlie Lindgren, and you have Eric Gustafson as well. What a big part of um, acquisitions they got there. Uh, from Brian McClellan. Um, some big... Actually, is that even their... I, don't even, I can't even think. Is that their GM's name? I think I just said some completely random person. I don't think that's their name. The guy's name. Uh, it's like... I can't even remember. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so some good acquisitions here. They acquire a Ford and Dylan Strom, who kind of... You could either argue he was bad in Chicago, or you could argue that Chicago didn't give him the time he needed. So you could really say, well, Strom... Could be a solid player this season if he gives is given the right ice time. And then he obviously have Connor Brown there as well. A very solid uh, type winger there that Ottawa just couldn't hold on to. So obviously they traded him to Washington for a second round pick. A pretty good trade for both teams, if we're being honest. So we'll see how Connor Brown does. You got a starter on a backup in Darcy Kemper. Kemper won the Stanley Cup with Colorado. And Lindgren won the Calder. Or actually, no. He took the Thunderbirds to the Calder Cup final. So these are two goalies who are experienced in taking teams to finals. And I think that is a good way to go uh, for the Capitals. And they also acquired Eric Gustafson, who if you've watched me for a while, you would know since he signed with the Flyers. I don't know how this guy's still getting NHL jobs. He is so bad. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'll, be, I'll be honest. I didn't think he was that good in Philly. Maybe it was just that, but like, I really didn't see it. Uh, anyways, moving on to their projected lineup. Starting off here in your top six, you have Alex Ovechkin. Evgeny Kuznetsov and Tom Wilson if he was healthy, but he's going to be out for the start of the season. Then you have Dylan Strom, Nicholas Backstrom, who if he was healthy, he'd play second line, but nope, he's injured, likely going to be out for almost the entire season. So that is rough for the Capitals. And then Connor Brown as well. Like we said, there is going to, there were going to be some big, um, big injuries to their top six, and Wilson and Backstrom are those two. And it really is a question of whether or not they're going to survive without him. Uh, you look at your bottom six there, you have, you have I almost said Ollie Mantha, uh, Anthony Mantha, uh, you have Lars Eller and TJ Oshie, then you have Marcus Johansson, uh, Connor McMichael, and Connor Sheary as well. So some notable players there, uh, Oshie playing third line, he'll get top six minutes, maybe even first line, obviously there since Wilson's out. Uh, so some good players added uh, to that bottom six, some solid players who will have some potential, and then for some extras you have Protas, Dowd, and Hathaway. So you have some players who can come up there and play decent. McMichael should get a chance to play well for the Capitals this year. Uh, Eller is obviously a very solid third line center. You know, you got some good additions down there and some good players. I think they'll do well. O overall, I think they will be a pretty good team. Although I do think Mantha will likely play top six. 
Uh, they might give Strom the opportunity. So, who knows? Uh, you look at your defense there overall. You have John Carlson. You have Dimitri Orlov in your first pairing. You have Gustafsson and Jensen for your second pairing. Then you have Favari and TVR as your third pairing. Then you have Irwin and o Irwin, Oreo, Eorio. I think it's Eorio. And Johansson as your uh, fill-in or extra defenders there as well. So it's pretty solid defense overall. Carlson and Orloff I do like. Uh, some very solid defensemen there. I've talked about Carlson before, saying how he's kind of just been robbed of Vesna's, or yeah, Vesna's, uh, robbed of Norris's. He puts up decent points every single year, but he just isn't that. He just kind of is one of those defenders who just gets shadowed away by the other defenders. The other defenders rise above him and kind of uh, stray away from Carlson, but he is a good defenseman, obviously. As for your goaltending, you have Darcy Kemper and Charlie Lindgren. As your two tandem there. Then you have Zach Fucal as a backup. Fucal showed some good potential in the NHL. So I would imagine he does get some NHL time. But overall, I like that tandem. Kemper, I've been a big fan of for a long time. Hopefully he does well with the Capitals. And then Lindgren as well. Um, just a solid goalie overall. Uh, I like that tandem as a whole. I think it's a good tandem. And I think it definitely will last. Uh, anyways, moving on to some of your biggest questions surrounding the Washington Capitals. How will they do without Backstrom slash Wilson? Well, they're really going to have to rely on some of their death players. Or some of the players that would be below Wilson, like for example, Connor Brown and Oshie, and below Backstrom, you'd have Kuznetsov and Eller. You really have to rely on those players to really play well, given they're going to get top six minutes. I would imagine some younger guys may come in here, they may get a chance uh, to play for that spot. But honestly, um, I think it really does rely on some of those type of players because those are big, big hits. I mean, some people may hate on Tom Wilson, but he puts up some good points. And Backstrom's still a very solid defenseman for a vet. Defenseman. A very solid forward for Ovechkin. So we'll see how that's going to do. How back, how no backstrom affects Ovechkin. We'll see. Uh, anyways, uh, the other question is, how will the new ads to this team? Will they? Will the new ads give the team overall some more confidence? Obviously, Connor Brown, uh, Dylan Strom, some guys here who really were kind of kicked to the curb by some of their other teams. And it is unfortunate, but maybe these players will gain some confidence in Washington and I'll give the other players confidence and maybe this team can go on some type of run in the playoffs. That is something you do got to take, take into consideration here and I definitely think that does play a role. Uh, anyways, moving on to your point meter or your point projections according to the Hockey News' fantasy guide there. Uh, they have Ovechkin leading the way to the surprise of literally nobody with 90 points. Not surprising at all. Probably like half of those will be goals. Uh, you have Kuznetsov in second with 82. You have John Carlson there with 74. And then you take a huge dip and go down to Dylan Strom with 49. And then Connor Brown with 47. Obviously, Backstrom and Wilson would be in between there. But since there isn't a, but since they're going to be hurt, uh, it, it isn't looking so good. So obviously, there, there's a huge gap between uh, 74 and 49. But I think that really is how it's going to go. It's going to be those three players and then everyone else, to be honest. Uh, but anyways, moving on to your sleeper or your bust. It's actually Anthony Mantha. Interesting here. A healthy Anthony Mantha comes at a perfect time. Given Nicholas Batchelor's uncertain future and Tom Wilson's ACL injury, Mantha generated slightly more shots percentage of 10 per 60 than Alex Ovechkin last year. 30 goals is possible. So that is a good thing to take into consideration. Given that those players are injured, Mantha may get some more time up in the NHL, and I think that definitely could play a role in what is to come. Uh, and anyways, uh, moving on to your question, do they make the playoffs? Now, the thing is, with with Washington, I kind of look at Washington as I do Boston. And we'll get into the Boston preview in a while. But I look at them the same as I do Boston. Boston has some injuries to their top six and their team as a whole. So maybe if they fall off because of those injuries, another team like, let's say, Columbus, like we covered yesterday, could come in and swoop in for that wild card or just the spot that they're in. So, honestly, I mean, in 2021, I said maybe because I really didn't know what was going to happen with that competitive East division or whatever they called it. I can't remember anymore. And in 2022, I said yes, which I was right about. So, Washington, I'm going to say yes because they make it every single year. I still think this team has that potential and they have young forwards coming up to the team where they can still be good. But... I could be wrong. I really could be wrong. I could be wrong about any of these predictions or any of these previews. But right now, I'm going to say yes. 
I think I think if these injuries do take a huge impact on them, I think a team may rise up and take that spot. But anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you all very much for watching. For all your supporters lately, I really do appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe down below if you are new. We are less than 100 subscribers away from 2,000, which is unbelievable. But anyways, thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Adios.